This is a school life, slice of life, drama, and not really, I wouldn't say comedy like at all, and romance. Hi everyone, happy Manga Monday. Today I'm going to be talking about Scum's Wish. This is a manga. There's also an anime and adaptation if you would like to uh, watch instead of read. Our main female's character's name is Hanabi. And our main male's character's name is Mugi. And if I'm saying their name wrong, I apologize. Hanabi is in love with her teacher who was originally a neighbor. Mugi is in love with who was his tutor. So in middle school, his parents got him a tutor and he fell in love with her. Even though, like, he knows, he's not dumb. He knows that his tutor is like a slut. And I say that in like the nicest way possible, or a man eater, however you wanna phrase it. Like, she definitely, you know, uses her body, her looks, her personality to get the attention that she craves. So even though she, let's say she doesn't like somebody, but she will literally take like, her best friend likes a dude. She knows her best friend likes this dude. So she will purposely get that dude to fall in love with her just to make herself feel better. That's the kind of person she is. And that's their music teacher. That's Hanabi's and Mugi's music teacher now that they're in high school. And he still has, you know, love, feelings, and affection for her. Just like Hanabi has love and feelings for um, her teacher, her homeroom teacher. I can't remember his name offhand either. So um, Hanabi and Hanabi and Mugi come to a agreement that they will basically use each other, be butt buddies without the sex, to be quite honest but be butt buddies and use each other to relieve their urges that they can't express to the people that they actually want to express to. So when Hanabi and Mugi are making out, Hanabi's actually thinking of her sensei or her teacher. And then Mugi is thinking of their music teacher, which used to be his uh, tutor. I have mixed feelings when it comes to this manga just because I don't know it's I, I, I understand like Hanabi gets to a point where she wants to emulate or replicate or be like the music teacher because the music teacher has able or was able to attract her sensei's attention or her homeroom teacher's attention so like the dude she likes ends up liking the chick that Yu-Gi-Oh likes because they're both teachers and you know it makes sense so Hanabi is wanting to replicate what she does which is not the brightest or the smartest idea I get why she's doing it but not super good, especially like being that young. So Hanabi kind of puts herself in situations where she's like with an older guy and they're in a karaoke room and he's kind of being like on the aggressive side. No, there's no rape or anything like that, but um, very well could have turned into that situation. And you know, she always stops from going too far so at least Hanabi you know doesn't completely strive off of just sheer emotions alone. Hanabi also does have like a best friend who is in love with her too. I wish I could remember her name offhand but her best friend is beautiful and super nice and loving and caring. This is actually kind of one of those rare situations where I was like why are you not going out with your girlfriend? So her best friend just like loves and adores her and Hanabi very clearly says in part of it that she wants someone to be like obsessed with her and love her for like who she is and wholeheartedly 
and that's her best friend. And that that part was kind of frustrating for me because it's like, well, you you say you want to be loved wholeheartedly, and you know you want these things. Your friend is like doing these things, but that's not good enough. Now, even though you know it's it's a girl, you know, she still does that. Sorry, my dog's barking at, I don't know what. So even though she's, you know, her best friend's a girl, she realizes she's not technically sexually attracted to her. It's more of just like, she wants to be wanted and she wants physical affection. She doesn't want to be alone anymore. So she kind of uses her friend. She just uses her friend and then it's just like she takes advantage of her friend's feelings for her, which is not cool. Like I get where she's going or what she's trying to do or succeed with. But at the same time, it just kind of sucks. I, her friend knows what's going on. And she even says it like, you know, I know you don't love me like that. Um, but because you're with me right now, it makes me really happy. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of sad. Um that, that whole situation is kind of sad. But Hanabi and Mugio come to the decision that they're going to try dating each other. And this is after them kind of just being makeout buddies for a while. But even when they date each other, this blows my mind. Because when they start dating each other, this is when they both like F up big time. Like you can't just like, why couldn't you just stay like friends with benefits? Like, because as soon as they were like, let's date, they both go on dates with other people, making out with other people, almost having sex with somebody. It's just like, it blows my mind that it was it's just like, it was, you would have been so much better if you just stayed friends with benefits. After this point, Mugi and Hanabi kind of distance themselves from each other because like they, they both know that they messed up and they did things that they shouldn't have been doing. And once they do come back around and kind of have a conversation, they decide and like make a pact that they're going to go and confess their feelings to the person that they really love. So Hannah B's gonna go confess to her homeroom teacher and Mugi is going to go and confess to their music teacher, which used to be his tutor. After they confess, they're supposed to meet back up with each other at a park at 10 o'clock at night and discuss what happened and kind of go on from there. So from here on out, I might be giving some spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, you um, probably should stop watching. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a good day. And I'm going to start telling spoilers at this point. Okay, bye. All right, so if you're still here for the spoilers, after uh, Mugi and Hanabi go and do their confessions, Hanabi ends up leaving with her best friend and they go and spend time together away. And this is kind of like her and her friends last real time together. Cause after this, her friend needs to kind of have separation and get over her. Like she, she knows at this point that Hannah B is not going to actually have an actual relationship with her that she wants. So she needs her to kind of like let her go and for them to go their own way. And unfortunately, because their relationship had gotten physical, like it, it crossed a line that they couldn't go back on friendship wise. So sometimes after you go past a certain point physically, when you're best friends, you usually can't go back. Sometimes if you date your best friend and it doesn't work out, there is no going back to the way it was before. And that this is a really good example of that. So Hanabi is on her own. She doesn't have anyone to console her because Mugi is actually now with the music teacher and they're having sex and just, you know, doing whatever she wants, whatever the music teacher wants, because she's made it very clear to Mugi, like, she might be having sex with them, but they're not exclusive. So Mugi is trying really hard to get the music teacher to change her ways and to actually want to be with him and love him back. Because that's all Mugi wants. Mugi loves her or lust after her, however you want to phrase it or look at it. So he wants her to feel the same way back. She doesn't. She actually really likes the, likes 
the homeroom teacher, the one Hannah B likes is the one the homeroom teacher really likes. So she kind of pushes Mugi to the side a little bit. She still uses him physically, but she's very open and honest being like, well, I'm going to go on a date with this other person and probably have sex with them. Like, you need to be okay with it. That's how it is. So, you know, Mugi is just kind of dealing with being the side piece and how hard that is mentally and emotionally. And Hannah B is dealing with the fact that the music teacher has her homeroom teacher under her thumb and he has like fallen in love with her and Hannah B doesn't have Mugi because Mugi is, um, have, <laughs> he's with the, he's with the music teacher too. So you get to see how Hannah B is handling everything, how she's going to handle everything. And I will say that at the end, I, I'm kind of on the edge whether or not I want to like give too much away because I already said like there was going to be spoilers, but I don't know. I don't want to give like the legitimate end away. But at the end, I, this whole, this whole thing kind of gave me mixed feelings, but at the end, I was really sad because, because Mugi and Hannah B, like their way, the way their relationship is, and maybe because I've, I've felt this way before myself personally. And I think a lot of people feel this way at one point in their life or most of, most people do, but you have this person in your life who accepts you no matter what you do, you're comfortable being with them, you want to be around them because it's not, it's not necessarily that they complete you and they make you whole, but it's just someone that you can be you with, that they can be themselves. You guys, it's not forced. Like the relationship that you have with this person is not forced. And it was kind of heartbreaking in a way to see how it ended for Hannah B. And I do think it was realistic in the sense that not everybody gets their happy ending. Not every high school, um, not every time you leave high school, you leave with the love of your life. You don't always end high school, you know, with the football star or the person that you love. Um, it's not always sunshine and roses and more often than not, it's kind of shit. Pardon my French. So I will give the author that, that at the end, Hannah B's actual situation leaving high school was rather realistic. It was just also sad too, to see the fact that with how Hannah B and Mugi's relationship ended, you just kind of, I felt kind of empty afterwards. Like legitimately when I was done reading the final chapter, I literally turned my Kindle off and I was like, well, that shit, like that ending sucked. And, and it's not necessarily that it sucked but it sucked in the regards that it didn't end the way that I wanted it to for Mugi. It did not end the way I wanted it to for the main character, which I, I do give kudos to the author because sometimes in most always, 90% of the time in real life, it doesn't end the way we necessarily want it to or would like it to. So that part was realistic, but still sad. Um, I do think, I do think it's a good read, although I would say it's, it is somewhat of a frustrating read. If you made it this far and actually listened through all the spoilers, then you already know. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you there. Bye everyone.